Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com, and we are here to talk about the DeGritter Ultrasonic Record Cleaner. I've been using this um, cleaner for many months now, cleaning hundreds and hundreds of records, and trying to answer a fundamental question. Is this ridiculous? <laughs> Basically, does this do a better job than my already pretty excellent record cleaner? Um, let's step back a, a bit. Some people are like, what the heck are you doing cleaning records in the first place? So there's a couple answers to that. One, if you buy used records, and I buy used records all the time, sometimes the best versions of a given record are um, the original or something that hasn't been re-released. You can find all kinds of amazing stuff at used record stores. And during this time of Corona, boy, do I miss uh, um, parsing through at record stores. Nonetheless, when you get a used record, sometimes it's been in somebody's house, there's a cat, there's there, there's pet hair, there's schmutz, sometimes there's uh, actual dirt on the record. Um, so it's pretty obvious that one should give it a clean. Uh, back in the day, one would simply use a record brush, maybe put a, some alcohol or some water on the record, um, wash it around, and um, that was what it was. Um, a few years ago, um, actually when I was sort of got back into vinyl, I did something very dangerous and I bought a really kick-ass um, uh, record player, and that uh, uh, encouraged me, as it were, to actually get back into uh, buying records. Um, I bought a spin clean. It's about 100 bucks, big yellow thing, works fine. It's got two brushes on the side, you put a record in, you, you, you turn it one way, you turn it the other way, you put it on a rack like this, and the record dries um, after you uh, do with a... Um, um, a lint-free cloth, uh, you occasionally give it a rub, uh, put it down, and I did probably 3,000 records that way. Went through my entire collection that had never been cleaned. I had stuff, fingerprints on it, all kinds of crazy stuff that was there, and that was fine. I did the thing. And then I wasn't really happy about having to dry them all in the rack that way, of having to actually rub the records. I wasn't super pleased with that. So I did something very, very silly at the time. I bought a vacuum cleaner machine. This is the Okinoki. Um, it's one of many, you've seen VPI. Um, uh, the Nitty Gritty is one that's slightly different. The way that the Okinoki works, just to show you, you have a little vacuum um, handle like this, a little wand. You put the record on, you spin the record, the turntable plays, you then put on vacuum, it's gonna be loud for a sec. And then when it's a vacuum, you push this down and then it actually sucks all the water and the liquid out from the machine, which is stored in the sort of, um, in the bowels of the machine. This has been great. And this record uh, cleaner has done a fantastic job of getting rid of particularly sort of hard, um, um, a surface muck. And basically it's just making your records look nice, clean, and awesome. And for, I guess about four years or now, something like that, three years, this has been my go-to machine. Now, the advantage of this, it works. It absolutely cleans your records, it does it what its thing. Disadvantage, we're lazy. It's a little bit more manual. Obviously, even though it's automatically spinning around, you're still using a brush um, on top of it, spraying liquid on it and doing it that way. And also, um, just based on what it's doing, the way that it's vacuuming and all of that, those other elements, there's always a sense that you're not quite getting really into the groove as the way that you actually would want to. It's doing a nice job on the surface and getting rid of all the surface stuff, but obviously the way that records are built, they're a bunch of grooves. And if you get sort of um, dust or elements within there, hopefully this will actually um, get rid of it. But when you're listening to records, you always have that sense when you hear pops and clicks like, I wish there was another way, another method that it could actually do to extract more music out of the record. And that's absolutely, uh, uh, that's the point after all. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the most out of any record that we can. We bought the thing, let's extract the maximum amount of musical energy, importance, uh, information that we can get from these ridiculously century-old technology, these grooves going up and down or side to side on a modern stereo cartridge. That's what we're trying to do. So when I did it with this, I always had the sense of like, Ugh, I bet there's something else that we can actually do to actually get it out of it. Um, and I knew I'd, I'd been to record um, uh, high-end audio stores and I'd seen the pretty preposterous um, high-end ultrasonic uh, cleaners. Um, 
Um, there, there's uh, Audio Desk makes um, a pretty formidable one, this big metal thing. It's got spinning brushes. It claims to be ultrasonic. There's a whole conversation um, uh, to have about whether it's just using ultrasonic to actually miss the air um, uh, as, as opposed to being a pure ultrasonic cleaner. That's like a conversation that's way um, uh, above my pay grade, as it were. But there was other machines um, that came out, a bunch of German, uh, Japanese, Korean machines that would do um, basically you put it in, the record would spin, uh, it would be bombarded um, often from the bottom um, with ultrasonic uh, bubbles. These bubbles um, would burst once they actually hit the record. That cavitation pressure would actually dislodge stuff within the groove. And then hypothetically, you'd have a clean record player. In Canada, these ran for $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 for this big monstrous unit. And it seemed that stuff I couldn't get off with this, I could take to an ultrasonic machine, have it run through, and even if the sound didn't magically make it better, you certainly had that sort of sense of, I've done what I can do. I've extracted the most out of this record that I can do. When you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a record like this Lunatic does, you wanna make sure it's the best version of that version of that record, as it were. Uh, which brings us to the Gritter. Now, the Gritter was a, um, uh, a development out of a bunch of uh, uh, really interesting people um, out of Estonia. And they basically, uh, um, um, uh, the, the head of company saw a need. And he's like, I, I, as he as he described in an interview I did with him, um, he was lazy too. And he just wanted something that you just put in and it just does what you want to do, namely clean your records. This shouldn't be such a headache, but we just want it just to put it in, hit start, walk away, come back, you have a clean record. And really that's what this unit does. Now, um, he says he's lazy. He, he developed a company, hired a bunch of people, went through hundreds of iterations of manufacturing, all to create this thing, which fundamentally looks like a toaster. Um, and that's really what it is. What it, what it consists of is, essentially I have two of them, so I'm gonna show you the inside. This is, this is the water tank. This is, this is, you actually fill this up, there's a fill up line, and this sort of sits in the back here. And, and you put in water, and and basically the way the way that it, it it rolls is that you put in water and some cleaning fluid. This is the record cleaning fluid. Um, uh, this is their intense wash. This is their regular cleaning fluid, and you have a little pipette. And so you just put the pipette. You put this much in. You put it in this uh, reservoir, which has a lid to prevent evaporation. I usually take this off when I'm cleaning so it doesn't overheat. You turn it on on the mechanism here, you hit play, and it cleans your record after you've selected um, whether you're doing, what, what level of, uh, um, of, of cleaning you actually want to accomplish. That's it. What is it actually doing inside? Well, not to get too uh, uh, much into the weeds here, but essentially what it is is that there's two, essentially speakers, if you think of it that way, that are bombarding the record, uh, bombarding the water that's in the reservoir here. Let's step back a little bit. Um, from the water, pumps actually bring and fill up this cleaning reservoir while the record is, is sitting in here. And so if you actually put in a record, might as well take one out. Led Zeppelin II on MoFi. For those that know about this record, they know why this is a relatively big deal. And you basically put the record in like this. You hit play, and the record, and if you see my other viz, you'll actually see this take place. The record will actually start spinning after the reservoir um, has filled up and it becomes bombarded. You hear this like clicking noise as it gets bombarded with bubbles, essentially. Now, we can get into the size of bubbles, how much energy is required. All of that stuff is available on the Degrader website and I really do encourage you to, to delve into it if you're super interested. But, but what they did was they built a record cleaning machine for cleaning records. They didn't repurpose an existing um, ultrasonic machine, which often um, um, uh, emanates from the bottom. So if you think about it, all the bubbles will be coming up from the bottom of the record. And by the time you actually get um, somewhere over here, the, the cleaning forces won't quite be what you want them to be. So you have to balance between the amount of energy going into it, the type of bubbles, the way they're going and all this stuff, which for me, again, way above my head, but what I really appreciate about these guys as opposed to other people that show up in lab coats and make all kinds of, frankly, bullshit claims, um, that these guys 
did the science. These guys did the experimentation. You can go on their site and actually see electron microscope, um, um, not electron microscope, excuse me, simply um, zoomed in uh, microscopic views of, of, the, uh, of the grooves, both before and after, and show the efficacy of this type of machine. From our perspective as record listeners, we just want it to work. It's like we can have cartridges that do un unbelievable specs, but how do they sound? Do they do what we want it to do? So th we put in the record, we hit play, the record spins, gets, uh, gets hit by, for X amount of time by a bunch of bubbles, the, the, um, the system drains, and then a fan, a built-in fan, will actually um, dry the record while it continues to rotate, it'll beep, I put it in the other rack just for a little bit uh, more of uh, final cleaning. So as you can see on the degrader, we have a series of buttons here. Um, one is a selector button, and the other allows you to adjust not only the drying time, but also to hit stop and actually exit out of menus. So as you go through, I have my information, along with the number of runs I've done, the temperature of the water, the version number, and obviously my serial number. Well, I have different water levels that I can select. I hit the button, I hit play, and I can choose whether I have high, medium, or low. It's actually a paper that actually it comes with, so you can actually um, have it um, um, be wet to actually see where the high level, the medium level, and the low level is. They suggest setting it on medium. I've actually found that high has worked uh, well for me. I actually don't mind if a little bit of the label gets a bit wet. I'm used to on my Okinoki, uh, the label getting absolutely saturated. But with this, um, with these elements, um, I, I'd much rather that it's actually getting in the cleaning level right into the groove, um, the run out groove, especially for elements like Sgt. Pepper, where there's actually audio information in there. So I've left it on high and I've not found any water damage or any elements actually coming through into the record, um, uh, record label itself. Fan power. What's nice about this is I can actually dial down. So let's say you don't want to hear the record uh, fan for whatever reason, you can actually dial it down and then have a longer period of time, but at less fan power. I just want it done right away, so I crank it to full fan power and that's fine with me. Degas, every time that you actually put a new water element inside, you actually run a degas. You simply will hit play and a degas uh, process will go through without a record in it. It would fill the reservoir, basically bombard a bunch of bubbles in there and basically get rid of any uh, errant gases inside the water that you've just filled um, from your uh, distilled water bottle. It's just a, another process to go ahead and and work through. This is obviously a dry cycle. So if I wanted to um, to set um, to only dry my elements, I can actually go ahead, hit play, and I'll actually go ahead and dry. And then there, here's my three sections. I can do a quick, a medium, or a heavy. And within here, I can dial in the amount of time, how much drying is being done, all of those elements all taken into consideration. Now, just to show how it works, I want to do a quick clean. It'll take me three minutes, 45 seconds, and I simply hit play. The mechanism will fill up. It's going from the back into this reservoir here. The record's here and has yet to start spinning. As you can see, after a certain period of time, the washing kicks in. As you can see, after a certain period of time, the washing kicks in, the record goes across, and you can see there's little elements that are actually popping. These are essentially the bubbles that have cascaded on it and actually gone through the surface to actually clean these elements. Now, I am cleaning here with their sort of, um, their general purpose record cleaning fluid. That's what's doing the trick. There may be a little bit of dust in the air. I do have a cat somewhere on these elements, but this will actually go through and blow off. And as it's in the water, it'll actually get rid of anything that's sort of baked in there. I can see here just some bubbles that are actually on the record themselves very very fine but nonetheless this is essentially what it's doing as it's going through its cleaning process the record spins does its thing and it counts down to all um, it's taking place about how long the washing is going to be now after a couple minutes the draining process actually takes place it's basically removing the water from this section and going back into the back water reservoir the record still is doing a little bit of spinning and you can see it's actually changing the way it was doing it. It's sort of doing a, a, a half, it was doing a half rotation before and now as it's going through, it's a full rotation. You hear the pumps going through, making sure that all the water's out. That goes through, um, through its filtration system. 
and then the drying section comes in. And then as the timer actually reaches zero, it simply shuts off. I get a pleasant beep. You see there's a little bit of visual indication on the screen there, and we're good to go. Now, if you listen now, there is no fan going. If I've done a couple of these, especially if I've done a heavy load, I will occasionally have the fan going. I did a quick one, and I realized I did not take off the back, which I should have done. It's not like it doesn't work with that there, but if I was doing a number of them, it would obviously heat up. It automates so much of what this did. So much of, I mean, look, this is semi-automatic. Think of it this way, this is a fully automated unit. You put it in, you hit play. It's like hitting play on a CD player or a tape player. Um, and, and it simply uh, goes through its entire mechanism. Now, does it do a better job than this? Sort of. Um, I think that this is absolutely a much, much more effective way of doing that. I got a couple records, I just wanna clean them put it in, hit play, walk away, come back. It's fantastic. I still have this unit. And this, um, this is part of the conversation I have about um, the type of records and what I'm actually cleaning with this. Fact of the matter is, is if I get like a junky um, record, which I really love and I really want to listen to, I'm not going to immediately throw it into this unit. I'm simply not. There is nothing physical, save for the bombardment, uh, save for the water and the bombardment of bubbles, that's actually getting rid of surface layer elements. This, where I'm actually scrubbing the record and actually vacuuming it, will do a much better job at that surface layer gunk that's on records when they're a real mess. That being said, Previously, if I bought new records, this is enough of a schlep that I didn't always do it with every record I bought. Now that I have this, absolutely. I get a brand new record, it goes in the unit. It can go for the least amount of time. I can do it um, for the sort of uh, the, the slower, um, the mildest of the cleaning um, uh, cycles. But the fact of the matter is that I'm doing it even in brand new records. Because if you think about it, when the record's pressed in the plant, it's got a releasing agent um, that actually allows it um, to release from the press as, as, as it expands so the record doesn't get stuck on the top or the bottom. That releasing agent is occasionally washed off in distilled water, but often it's not. Often, obviously, it's not a clean. And if you ever watch um, um, footage of even some of the great uh, record pressing plants, they're kind of just like stacking them all on. They're all there. They're they're treating records sort of the way we that neurotics um, would would be much more frankly careful with. Some of the great record uh, plants um, use really nice sleeves and do all that stuff. Others, I mean, how many times have you bought a record, a brand new record, you take it out of the shrink, especially modern records and there's fingerprints on them, there's schmutz. There's all kinds of elements on it, and it's brand new. I'm like, I can't believe I just bought this, and it's already a mess. Well, if you clean it with either of these machines, I think that you'll get a much, much better um, response. And the fact of the matter is, what this is great for is getting those elements that are in the groove. And as I've said, weirdly, the more you do it with this, hypothetically, the better the response will be. Um, that if there really is something that's sort of deep in the groove that is not a flaw in the pressing itself, um, the odds are that you'll actually be able to dislodge this if you do a couple, three, four, sometimes five, sometimes 10 cleaning cycles with this. Now, how do you know that it's actually doing the job? Well, you just play it. Um, the way that this is structured is that no damage will be done to the record itself. It's um, tuned to a specific freq series frequency, a, s a swept frequency, to do the cleaning, but not at the expense of damaging the record. And that's incredibly important because a lot of these machines just haven't been gone through that robust testing cycle to know that we're not killing our vinyl by cleaning it. Um, it's absolutely possible for me to scratch or damage the record when I'm physically interacting with it in, in a machine like this. If I'm doing there's a bit of grit and I'm, I'm scrubbing even with a surface layer, I'm physically touching the record. Whereas here, the record's actually simply spinning. It's being held on its edges as it's spinning. And it's being bombarded by bubbles and water. And it is a much safer, a much more effective way of actually getting that deep clean, getting those deep elements out of this record than anything I frankly have ever used. This is so easy to use, so effective at doing what it's supposed to do, namely take a record which is not disgusting, not filled with, um, with guck, 
That's what this is for, but simply a clean or a pretty decent record, maybe a couple fingerprints, maybe some dust um, in the elements, put it in here, hit play, let it clean, and it will absolutely extract the most out of the record that you want to get. Now, is it, if this runs for 3,000 US dollars, I think it's 3,000 euro, Canadian pricing still to be determined, I believe, that's insane for a bunch of people that are playing on a $100 or $60 record players. Why would you spend that much money on something like this? Well, I have a lot of records. And frankly, I want my records to last for as long as many of them have lived. Um, I also want to sort of obviate that, that niggling feeling. I would often have, I'd, I'd buy this, some silly pressing, some, um, some first pressing like this Who record here, and I would bring it home and I would clean it with this and there would be a lot of um, pops and clicks. And I'd be like, should I be able to extract even more from this record or is that simply baked in? Are those just elements that were there from the beginning uh, almost 50 something years ago, 55 years ago when this record came out or is it something that we can actually um, do a better job of cleaning? I put this record in here, does a better job cleaning. Now it is not a miracle worker. This is absolutely fundamental. This cannot, uh, for lack of a better word, polish something that is already a turd. This isn't gonna magically make something that, does, that fundamentally has a scratch or has some um, damage or has pressing errors. Often when they press this stuff, especially when modern pressings, they're doing it so quickly that the vinyl actually sort of sticks a little bit while it's releasing and that creates surface noise. You have, um, you get a brand new record and you'll just hear this <laughs> going on in the record and you're like, do I have something on my cartridge? Is there something going on? And you realize, no, this noise is baked into the vinyl itself. I have a share recording, which um, uh, came out, um, I guess last year and it was driving me crazy because I was hearing the 60 Hertz hum. I'm like, do I have a grounding issue with my record um, set up? Is there something with my amplification that's sort of gone all to hell? I, I realized that on the run out groove, the 60 hertz was continuing, and when I turned off the record, just as a test with the cartridge, it was not something you normally do, but I turned it off, and you heard the 60 hertz come and go In other words, it was baked in. In other words, when they pressed the record and were actually going through the lathe, the lathe itself was picking up hum from somewhere in the record pressing plant. We go through so much effort to make these records sound amazing, and we got to deal with that. Um, I talked to the people at Warner, they're like, nobody had complained. I'm like, nobody had listened carefully enough. And so sometimes you are just stuck with the record being the way that the record is. That if you really want pristine, absolutely no issues whatsoever, go digital. I have tons of digital. I have tons of um, recordings that are absolutely free from any of these um, aberrant physical uh, manifestations. Um, you can get away with that. That's not what uh, listening to records is all about, as you know. There's a certain lunacy that comes from actually us doing it. Yes, we're gonna get a certain quality and a certain timbre out of our system. My analog system definitely sounds differently than digital. I'm not gonna claim which one is superior. I'm simply gonna say they are definitely different. If I'm listening to a 24-192 and vinyl that is from the same 24-192 file and then mastered for this and played through all the system that I have set up, they sound different. I like them both. In some days I'll listen to one, some days I'll listen to the other. But a fundamental thing is with digital, I plug it in and it basically works. Is I can get away without going crazy. With records, to get the most out of it, you gotta go a little crazy. And going a little bit crazy sometimes involves making sure that the records themselves, the, the, the sort of software before you put it into your hardware, is in the best shape it can be. And honestly, the degrader I think is does the job that it's designed to do. Namely, to provide an absolutely seamless, effortless way of ultrasonically cleaning your records. That's what it's designed for and that's what it does. What's great about the way that they've actually built this is that it's firmware upgradable. Since I've had the record, since I've had the degrader, I think they've done three or four um, software upgrades, changed the direction that the uh, record actually rotates because they found that um, um, with one particular cleaning structure, um, it actually left a fine line of dirt. I thought it was my fault. I thought I had done something silly. They recognized it and actually did an update on the system and it worked the way that it wanted to work. 
um, w uh, it has changed the way that uh, the, the screen actually operates. It's giving me uh, more warning messages. It's doing all that sort of stuff. So I love when a company like this has done something that is is fundamentally uh, almost a prototype. We, we are at the forefront. This is their first machine that they've actually built. The fact that they're continuing to improve it and to work with the people that actually have these um, without making fundamental hardware changes because they, they went through that with an extensive, extensive beta process. But through software updates, you're able to make this unit better. I'm ecstatic. And honestly, this is the fundamental point. I can put a record through here and I know it is what it's gonna be. And I can have a certain relaxation about that. That if it's not being cleaned through a process here, if I've gone through the extra step and done uh, the Okinoki first and then this, if I clean it through here, even I clean it through a few times and I play it and the record sounds really noisy or the record has a particular pop or crackle that's simply not going away, it's not going away. I simply accept it. I can get another version of the record. I can, as I said, I could just listen to it on Spotify if I wanted to. But nonetheless, I know that this gives a certain sense of mind, a sense that I've done everything that I can do to make this record sound as good as it's gonna be. And weirdly, that's worth a lot of money for me. It's worth a lot for me to be able to say, I have done what I wanted to do to make this record sound as good as it can. Take that for what it will. Uh, I believe that there's lots of people that, that sort of share my, uh, my, um, my feelings on that. Now, Again, I've done hundreds of records on here. Um, the consumables are such that you have obviously these little um, these uh, these little cl uh, cleaning fluid elements that you put in. You also have these. Uh, this is a weird color because of one of the cleaning fluids. You can see it's yellow. It actually turns it yellow. These are normally white, but these are the filters. These actually go on the side. This little coin slot here, and they actually go in here, and it's it's wrapped in a sort of um, a mesh. Uh, element and then the water passes through here and every 50 records or so I take this out and I wash it out now I have a bunch of these I'm sort of um, 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 I'm using a bunch of them all at once but but as as they go through it does the thing of filtering the water of ensuring because every single time you clean it's going back and forth it goes from the reservoir to the cleaning reservoir back to the main water reservoir. I have two of these because I can have one, let's say with pure distilled water, and I have one with the cleaning fluid and do a double clean if I wanted to remove any residue of this cleaning fluid. I haven't really been doing that as much as um, uh, I, I may have been conditioned to do. Um, having two of these um, uh, containers has been really good fundamentally for just um, uh, being able to have what one wash out. These are dishwasher safe. So you can actually go ahead, put it in the dishwasher and have another one and continue to clean. Gripes about it. Honestly, everything has pretty much worked exactly the way that I expected to do. It is no miracle worker. It is not going to make something that has a fundamental problem to the record work suddenly. You're not gonna put it in and go, oh my God. I actually put up on, um, on the Hoffman form a couple ABs, um, records that I knew were a little bit rough. I played one and played the other. And I asked people to say from the high resolution files, what, which one they thought was before and which one they thought was after. If it's already a clean record, if it's already a record that's gone through here, it's very difficult to hear the difference. Even look at the waveform, extremely difficult to go from here to here. Nonetheless, I know if it's gone through here, I'm certainly not making it worse and I'm definitely making it um, a modicum better. Is it a radical difference? No, between this and this, not. This is a 600, 700, $800 unit. This is a $3,000 unit. Is the difference warranted? The difference is warranted in that, again, that fundamental point that I know once it's gone through here, I know I've pretty much done what I can do with it. Now, if it's a brand new, um, sorry, if it's a record that has a lot of dust on it, of course, if I haven't cleaned it at all, I play it before and after, the differences will be quite radical. But there are no radical changes between doing this record clean and this record clean. The differences are subtle if they're, if perceptible from somebody who's actually doing an AB blind test. Um, uh, uh, certainly for a bunch of records that I know are super problematic, this has not got rid of uh, um, many of the pops and clicks that you may have hoped it to, but it does some of them, and some of them is a help. Now, this, this sounds like faint praise, but I, 
honestly, I have to keep repeating this. This does what it's supposed to do. It does that hypothetically that top level of cleaning, that sort of um, industrial level of cleaning that you actually want from a record. The, no, the fact that I know that this investment that I've made is as good as it's going to be for that particular physical version. And for that, I am ecstatic. Um, and to, as I've seen the development, any of the quirks that I've seen with it, as I said, there's a fine line of dust occasionally when it would actually uh, be done cleaning. That's resolved. I haven't seen that in, uh, since the last firmware update. Um, the the uh, the it, on previous um, it, um, iterations of the software, it would overheat and actually stop after a, a particular point of time. Now they've programmed it so that the fan continues, so it actually cools um, the water in here. I occasionally forget to take this off, and um, the water. Um, uh, does heat up uh, quite a bit because you basically you have energy going into the water And so if I'm doing 10 records all at once, it's a really good idea to take this off I occasionally forget to put it back on and then the water actually evaporates and then I got to put more stuff worse With this fluid it's organic fluid if I leave it in here and I leave it in for a week or so It really does start to be stanky um not a great idea to do it, um, which means that if, unless you're doing sort of a bunch all at once, you do occasionally have to refill it with distilled water and, um, and, and do a clean that way. One thing that I found is I'm not always putting in cleaning fluid. Sometimes I'm simply doing it through the cavitation process without the additional fluid, and that way I can keep in, in, uh, in with the um, lid on one of these elements just uh, without these elements ready to go. I simply pop it in and when I just have a record that I just wanna clean super quickly, I can go ahead and do it. Um, it's, I think, very attractive. It's this nice retro to toaster look. Um, if you actually look at the inside mechanism, it's extremely clean, um, really nicely laid out. Um, the way that it works in terms of taking this in and out, it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get used to it, it's fine. I've scratched the um, edge a little bit, getting it out. Absolutely, the best way of doing it, a screwdriver will absolutely uh, sort of chew up the metal. Use a coin, a big coin. In Canada, I use a $2 coin to open it up. The buttons have been extremely clear. I haven't seen any software glitches. Software updates are extremely, extremely simple. There's um, an, S, um, um, an SD card on the back. You simply put it in and it goes ahead. What more do you want from a unit like this other than for it to simply work? So in conclusion, the Degrader Ultrasonic Cleaner simply is the best I've ever used. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that I know that I can put a record through here and get the most out of my record, period. I absolutely am going to keep this, as ridiculous as that is. I'm going to keep the Okinoki for those truly soiled records, those bargain bin things that you um, sort of found um, in the back of the record store, those hand-me-downs that you got from some grandparent, something that really needs a really good scrub. Once it's gone through here, and once I've gone through the drying process on through here, I'm gonna put it into my degrader. If I get a brand new record and I put it through, I put it in here, I hit play, we're good to go. Um, it works with colored vinyl, it works with um, picture discs, works with it, whatever you want. And this is something fundamentally interesting. It also works via adapter with 45s. Now, to make a 45 work on the Okinoki, you actually have a different size arm, which has, well, it's the same size arm, but the Velcro on the arm is a slightly smaller for actually for you to allow to do a seven inch. Now, I don't know of a better solution than this, so let's be clear, but if there's one thing that's fiddly in this entire endeavor, it is cleaning seven inches. Now this one has just been in this cardboard and it's got schmutz all over it. And so it would be a bad idea for me to clean this anyway. You basically have to put the record in here and you have these little sort of grommets, these rubber things, and you can see how challenging this is to get it right without completely murdering this record. So if you do this and they sort of hold it in place, hypothetically, I have it so it's clean and uh, grippy enough right there <laughs> for it to go in the, in the unit. You can see I'm unable to do it because we're on camera, but basically right there, I would be able to put this into the unit like that. 
and would actually clean the seven inch that way. Now, that is more work than I've done with anything to do with this degrader. I wish there was some magical way, some magnets that it would actually go, that I could put it in some way that I could actually dunk in um, uh, into, into the slot to allow me to much more readily do um, seven inch records. I can't think of a better way than this. Still, it's the edge of this sort of acrylic um, that's gonna be turning on the, on the main section going through here. And it does a very, very good job of cleaning the seven inch records as much as it does of cleaning 12 inch. There's also a 10 inch adapter that does something very similar. Once it's done, you can see it sort of, it pops out very easily. And then I can go ahead and um, go through it that way. So if there's one minor thing for seven inches, it's kind of a schlep. Does that mean that I'm not happy that they have the seven inch adapter? Of course not. Um, the fact of the matter is this is a little bit of a hack, but it does the job that we want it to do. You put it in here, it cleans the record, we go from there. So basically the degritter is the ultimate record cleaner. It's as simple as that. It uses technology that actually gets deepened in the grooves and actually extracts the most of the music that you have baked onto your disc. I would not use it for absolutely filthy discs. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed to clean something to its utmost. Even a brand new record that has that agent on it, this does what you want to do. Other versions that are simply ha uh, much more of a hack are basically taking um, cheap knockoff um, ultrasonic emitters in a giant tub, uh, putting some sort of nonsense powder on it, bombarding it from above, just absolutely nonsense. This is designed by record fans for record fans. This is designed fundamentally to work, to work for many years, to be over-engineered. I don't, I can't imagine they're making a lot of money on these things at all. I think that they went through so many process and so many different iterations in order to get to this, that they've simply built a tank. I expect this to last for years and years and years and years. My understanding is that any of the elements are actually user user replaceable, that if we have the pump element or we have these other elements, we can just simply pop it in by taking off uh, the screws on the side. I believe this absolutely is the best thing that money can buy to actually clean your records. I think it should not be the only thing that you have to clean your records, but this is the last stop. This is the thing that you do before you put the record on your turntable. If you have something that's been in the sleeve for a while and you haven't listened to it in a while, put it in here, four minutes later, take it off the rack, put it in, good to go. The greater absolutely astonishing. Uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to actually be using this for its many months, and I look forward to using it for many more years. I'm Jason Gorber for ThatShelf.com. It's a long uh, review, but thank you for watching it all. Please uh, subscribe, it really helps us. Um, follow us on social media. And um, if you're interested in uh, more of our looks at different technology, please leave us uh, some comments. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. All the best.